Around Bowl Day 84, and really, when you think about it, number one, number two, and number five all lost today. So the big day for upsets. Who will be number one? We'll figure it out in a few minutes, perhaps. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the highlights from around the country today. First up, the Fiesta Bowl right here on NBC Sports. The view in Tempe, Arizona, as Pittsburgh thought they may have had a late fourth quarter win with the snuffy Everett field goal. But Ohio State showed some class coming back. Over the years, they've been a running team. Here they win it with a touchdown pass with just 39 seconds to go. Tom Zach to Jemison, and they win it 28 to 23. On to the Cotton Bowl. The Dogs did it. They trailed 9 3 to number two unbeaten Texas, but Texas fumbled this punt late in the fourth quarter. Gary Moss recovered it for Georgia. So then Georgia. They took it in from 17 yards away. Their quarterback, John Lastinger, did it. So number two unbeaten Texas loses to Georgia, 10 to nine. In the Rose Bowl today here on NBC, all Bruins. The Pac-10 continues to do it to the Big Ten. Number five, Illinois, goes down to defeat 45 to nine at the hands of Rick Neuheisel. This 15-yard pass to Carl Durrell was one of four. That tied a Rose Bowl record. So when you think about the last 15 Rose Bowls, the Pac-10 has won 13 of them. Then the Sugar Bowl tonight, Auburn fans feel perhaps they should get a few votes for number one. They knocked off Michigan by a score of 9-7, to seven, although they did not score a touchdown today. They did all with field goals. Bo Schembechler and Michigan, well, they had the lead throughout the game. This was the only touchdown. Steve Smith, four-yard rollout, 7-0 Michigan. But the uh, Auburn uh, defense really did a job on Michigan here. Four turnovers. Now, here we go. Al Del Greco, 19-yard field goal, third of the game with 23 seconds remaining. Auburn wins it 9-7. to seven. Their fans say, give us a couple of votes for number one. Now, the game you just saw, one of the great collegiate bowl games in history, perhaps the top Orange Bowl in their 50-year history. Miami knocks off powerful Nebraska as Howard Schnellenberger and company do it. They took a 17-0 lead. Bernie Kosar, two-yard touchdown pass to Glenn Dennison. That was the first of the touchdown plays. Then the trick play. Here's how Nebraska got on the board. The snap that they fumbled on purpose. The guard, Dean Steinkuhler, picked it up, ran 19 yards for the touchdown, and Nebraska finally scored and trailed 17-7. Now second-half action. Albert Bentley, seven yards away. He takes it in. Miami now leads it 31-17. Critical play here. Mike Regier is hurt. Leaves the game with an ankle injury. He finished with 147 yards. But Nebraska came back. Heartbreak here for Irving Fryer. Wide open, and he dropped it. But Nebraska got Fryer off the hook. Jeff Smith did it on a fourth and eighth. Smith takes it all the way in for the touchdown, and Nebraska closes to within one at 31-30. The gutsy call going for two points. It's not to be. Miami wins it 31-30. So, who is the national champion? Is it Miami? Is it Auburn? Or is it Nebraska? All have just one loss. Nebraska's gutsy call may have lost them the game going for two points, but it may have won them some votes. We'll find out 6.30 tomorrow night. Len Berman in New York, back to the Orange Bowl now. Thank you, Len. 31 to 30, the final score, Miami the victor, and now let's go down to the Miami locker room to Bill McAtee. Bill? Okay, thank you very much, Don Kirky. Bernie Kozar, I think somebody forgot to tell you you were a freshman. You hung in there, showed a lot of poise. Your line did a terrific job. I'll tell you, today the offensive line, they've been, they really haven't been getting much credit all season. And uh, there's the guys like right there, Ian St. Clair, Paul Berticelli, my roommate, Alvin Ward. You know, all of Dave Heffernan and Juan Carmen. That's a heck of a group. And I'll tell you, I, those guys, they, they said they give their life for me, and I think they just about did today. I know Nebraska plays a lot of man, and it, there was no doubt that you felt you could throw on them. Yeah, we went into the game thinking that, uh, you know, we were going to be able to throw the ball. We tried to, uh, you know, we tried to mix it up early, and I think we did in the first quarter. But the, uh, well, but the, in the second quarter, we kind of got out of our game plan, kind of started throwing the ball too much. But, uh, you know, we got back into it the third quarter and were able to move the ball. You had a couple of new plays in there. I know one of the touchdown passes to Dennison was new. Yeah, they, uh, I think the second touch, the second touchdown we had today was that uh, it was called 50 wide middle as a new play, and uh, it worked well, you know, twice, a couple times today. I want to take you back uh, to the beginning of the season, the first week after the loss. Did you ever feel that it would come down to a moment like this? 
No, never. That's the only way to describe it. I never, you know, I, you know, I knew the team had the potential to, you know, win our games, but they end up the way it did. I really you, you know that Auburn won. Is there any question, though, in your mind, who's number one? Well, I guess it's up, you know, up to the polls, but I'd say in my heart, we're number one. Okay, Bernie Kozar. That's, that's the greatest coach right there. Howard, come on over, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, when you spoke of this game, you spoke in terms not only of it being an important football game, but in terms of community. Well, I think you could see out there in that stadium tonight what it really meant to this community and how totally involved and totally committed they were to this game tonight. This has been a love affair that's been developing for five years. Tonight was the uh, fulfillment of a dream that, uh, I say fulfillment, it might just be the beginning of a dream. I want to take you back a few moments ago on the field, the gutsy call by Tom Osborne to go for two. Now, he probably could have won the national championship had they tied the ball game. Was there any doubt in your mind that he tried for two? There was no doubt, doubt in Tom Osborne's mind. There was no doubt in my mind. He's a champion, and he uh, went after it like a champion. Now, one of the keys to this ball game, you said earlier in the week, was that if Nebraska scored, they had to take at least ten plays to do it. No big plays. And when they got their touchdowns, that's exactly how they did it. Well, it was, and that was a real reason why we were successful. Uh, the defense played... A super football game. They had one really major error, but other than that, they played a great football game against a great, great Nebraska football team, and our offense came back to life and uh, did some things pretty well, too. Bernie Kosar was super. This was a game, obviously, for your football team of emotion, and yet you had to be a little unnerved when Mike Rozier took off for 27 yards early on. I was unnerved uh, much of the game because when you have those types of people in the game, you know it can break at any time. But again, the defense played a bending defense, but they didn't break very much. Now, of course, Auburn won. Uh, is there any question in your mind about who's number one in the country? No, there's no question in my mind or anybody in this room's mind who's number one team in Amer uh, America. The Miami Hurricanes are the number one team. Howard, there have been an awful lot of stories about you leaving the University of Miami. Uh, we have to address those now. Well, it's just like you say, they're stories. No truth to them whatsoever? They're stories. Tony Fitzpatrick, your nose guard, it was very important, you said early, for him to get in there and penetrate, and he seemed to do that. Tony Fitzpatrick has to be the most gutty guy that I've known in a long, long time. Hadn't played a football game in 10 weeks. Scrimmage one time for 16 plays, and then to go out and play probably 72 plays against the finest offensive line in America. Howard, congratulations. A terrific football game. We enjoyed watching it as well. Thank you. 31 to 30. The University of Miami makes its claim to the national championship. Let's go back upstairs at Iron Cricket. Thank you, Bill. The emotion that's been spent this evening is as awesome as the game itself. It was just a phenomenal football game. We're just so privileged to be able to be a part of it, John. Yeah, and I think it's all been said, Don. The whole Orange Bowl committee couldn't have drawn up a better script, and the only man that predicted it was Bob Lafferty, so he's next year's president. He gets off on a good note. Well, it was a great, great victory, and again, uh, when you talk about the football game, as much as the Miami victory, you have to remember the courage, the valor of Tom Osborne and the Nebraska Cornhuskers going for the win. They did not get it. The final score, Miami 31, Nebraska 30 in the golden anniversary year of the Orange Bowl. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weisman. The coordinating producer of NBC's football coverage is Ted Nathanson. Today's telecast was produced by George Finkel, directed by John Gonzalez, technical director Lenny Stucker, associate director Joe Michaels, associate producer Antoinette Machiaverna. Due to the length of tonight's game, the Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson will not be seen. Stay tuned for local news, followed by Late Night with David Letterman. The final number's up on the golden anniversary of the Orange Bowl. The Miami Hurricanes, a team that started out the season losing to Florida 28-3, come back now to win 11 straight games, including this, the biggest victory in the school's history, a 31-30 upset of the number one team in the country, Nebraska. Miami doing it, led by a freshman quarterback, Bernie Kosar, playing with the skill and guile of an established.